It's Mike Meck, the bungalow chef, and welcome in the bungalow the night before Thanksgiving. You know, we're starting in our dining room here tonight. Uh, the table's all set, and what we're gonna be doing is a lot of prepping, sauteing, and really explaining my theory of Thanksgiving. So follow me into the kitchen. dining room's ready and I always start with a large meal like this with dessert first you know I love to bake my own pies so the apple pies are done the bread rolls are done and the pumpkin pies are just about there you know this is the first year um, I've decided to go back to a vintage stove so I have a 1949 chambers in the house so right now we're running with both stoves so it's a lot of fun and practical so let me pull out my pumpkin pies. Ooh, these look great. Traditional pumpkin pie, you can't go wrong. There's a lot of steps in doing a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Um, what I do the night before, or the day before, is I cut a lot of celery and onion. So if you're doing your stuffing, it's already prepared. Uh, if you're doing a soup, you have the basic items. Or worse comes to worse, you can throw it in your stock. I also pre-toast all my bread, and I use all my leftover bread, you know, all those extra uh, Italian rolls that you get on the uh, to-go dinners. I just throw in my freezer, I dry them out, toast them out, and then portion them or pull them apart for the dressing or stuffing. Um, on the stove, I always keep a large kettle of chicken stock. You know, chicken stock is an amazing thing for Thanksgiving. You can save a Thanksgiving dinner if you have that. If your turkey's too dry, you can moisten it up. If you have to heat up the turkey later, you can add some chicken stock to the pan and let it simmer. You can also use it for your own gravy or by adding a roux and making it a wonderful thick sauce. Or, worse comes to worse, if you have more guests than you thought, real easy chicken soup or turkey soup. So, uh, we're going to get a little bit closer to the stove here and show you what's cooking. Well, on the stove right now, we have a combination of things. Again, the chicken stock. Uh, I've also made homemade cranberry relish. Basically, fresh cranberries. I use honey for a sweetener. And I use a little bit of chili pepper to give it a little bit of a kick. And then I also put uh, oranges and lime zest in it. And believe it or not, I finish it out with a little gin. Can't go wrong. The juniper berries in there really helps with the flavor. Um, I'm sauteing the sausage here for the stuffing. My ratio is probably one pound of pork sausage per one loaf of bread. Uh, I make a lot of stuffing or dressing. Uh, so that's just about done. We're going to start sautéing the celery for the stuffing. So that's pretty easy. I use a little bit of um, olive oil. We'll get that nice and hot. And what I do is I always start with a fresh pan for the celery, but I use the wonderful sausage pan for with all the brown bits and drippings to saute the onions. The onions will pick up that beautiful pork sausage flavor. So the sausage is done. I always like to put it in a shallow pan to cool. We're not gonna make the stuffing tonight. We're gonna mix it in the morning. 
but I like to do all this prep the night before. We're going to add a little bit more of uh, oil to the sausage pan. And throw some of the onions in. Perfect. We want a real nice golden brown with that. You don't want to overfill your pan. You want to give it a low heat so they really caramelize. The longer they caramelize and become transparent, the more flavor they're going to pick up. Same way with your celery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of the orange to the cranberry relish. All the uh, onion and the celery are sauteing. Just do some fine slices. I like to use a serrated knife for this. Try to capture all that juice also. All right, we're gonna add the rest of this orange into the cranberries. You can see the uh, added oil and the onions are releasing the uh, little leftovers of the sausage on the pan. And the onions will really pick up that flavor. Whoops. The onions are not quite there, but getting close. We want them just translucent in color. We're also going to finish this. We're going to deep glaze the pan a little bit with a little white wine. Good for the chef a little bit later too. All right, while this is finishing, we're going to talk about what's left to be prepped for tomorrow. We're going to work on our red cabbage. So we're going to slice and grate our red cabbage, saute it with a little garlic, onion, and then season it with the bacon, and then also uh, vinegar and oil. We're also going to do for the second seating tomorrow, we're going to do a cream of carrot soup. So I'm going to be peeling a lot of carrots tonight. Also for the police department, we're going to do traditional candy carrots for their vegetable. And then don't forget the ever famous Mike Mack Bungalow Chef horseradish mashed potatoes. So again, there's going to be a lot of peeling going on tonight. So turkey, potatoes, stuffing, gravy, glazed carrots, red cabbage, and cranberries, and a whole lot of pie. So we thank you very much. It's Bungalow Chef the night before Thanksgiving. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. My cameraman's going to show up at 6.30, so as we put the first bird in, you'll be watching. Hey, welcome back. It's Thanksgiving Day at the Bungalow. It is my favorite meal. The aroma is fantastic. I have the chicken and turkey stock going. I'm doing some carrots right now for glazed carrots. I'm just finishing up the cucumbers for cucumber salad, thinking it's a light option for kind of a heavy, hearty meal. And then we're going to put uh, the first turkey in the oven. So uh, I hope everything's going well in your kitchens for Thanksgiving and everybody's coming and has a great appetite. Okay, and with the um, cucumbers, I just put a little salt between the layers. And then we'll add a kind of classic red uh, wine vinegar and olive oil and some scallions to that. But we want to have them pick up the flavor of the salt first. And we'll just let them sit. Uh, you can refrigerate them or because we're so close to serving time, room temperature is great. I guess it's time 
to address the big bird. So again, what I do is I take a great vintage roasting pan of my grandmother's and I do kind of a mirepoix of vegetables. So it's um, kind of a big chop of celery. I put some fresh carrots in there, an onion, a couple cloves of garlic. Garlic doesn't hurt anybody. And then I always take a lemon I hate those little SKU stickers on fruit. Um, and we're starting with about a 22 pounder and it's a pretty cool bird. I've washed it to the max. Um, I always take out the neck, the giblets, any other parts that shouldn't be in there anymore. Um, I always use kosher salt. I coat the inside of the cavity, uh, the backside and the front side of the cavity. I don't stuff my bird. Uh, stuffing the bird like our parents did, it's kind of um, not the best way, especially if you use a meat stuffing. Uh, it takes longer in certain parts of the bird for that stuffing to come up to temperature. So I always put my stuffing in separately, or if you call it dressing. Um, so again, I'm going to salt the cavity. What I do is I always take a separate bowl. I have my kosher salt in there. Because again, you want to be very careful about cross-contamination with a turkey, poultry, really anything you do in the kitchen. So again, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a good handful, reaching in, making sure the cavity is all nicely packed, salted down. And again, I find kosher, kosher salt being the best thing to do this. Same way with the neck. Lift that guy up. And then again, what I do numerous times while I'm in the kitchen, especially on Thanksgiving, wash those hands. Wash those hands as much as you can. So we have the mirepoix in the roaster. The turkey has been salted. A couple tricks of the trade I also do. Bacon fat right into on the upper breast. Shove those in. We're going to throw half an onion in the cavity. We're going to throw half a garlic head with the skin on and all. I like to take a lemon, split it in half, half in the neck, half in the posterior. It really makes it very clean and light, all the drippings that come out. You can really taste the, the citrus in the drippings. Okay, I have some fresh rosemary from the garden. Couldn't resist. And then wash our hands again. And what I always like to do, and I always use the best foil you can afford or find in today's world. Some of it you bring home, it's pretty flimsy. I always wrap my wings because they're a finer meat and density. They have a tendency to overbake and kind of fall off and we don't want that to happen. So we're ready to go. And again, it's over a 20 pound bird. Just fits. And again, you can see the drippings off the turkey has to be totally sanitized. I'm going to do a little olive oil. And we're going to do a little sprinkling of salt. I start my turkeys off at about 425 for a half hour, reducing to 350. This size of bird will take easily five to six hours unstuffed if your oven's pretty decent. Turkey number one is in the oven. Okay, it's glazed carrots time. Very, very simple. Just take carrots, peel them, dice them, 
bring them to a boil in a uh, salted water um, until they're fork tender. You don't want them overdone, a little bit more on the al dente side, which I've done. I'm going to strain the water off. I've taken two sticks of butter and about half a cup of brown sugar. We're caramelizing that. We're going to get it nice and golden brown. In the meantime, while that's cooking, I'm going to add a little lemon zest to it. Okay, the color's perfect. How can you go wrong with butter and brown sugar, especially this early in the morning? I'm going to throw that right over the carrots. And you're going to continue that cooking until everything gets a little bit thicker and the carrots continue cooking. So that's well on its way. We also have the stock pot. We have the neck and the giblets and the stock we started yesterday. Well, I know I've demoed red cabbage production before, but it is one of my favorites and every Thanksgiving has red cabbage in my house. We actually have a bowl that I think red cabbage has been served in at least for the last 50 years, so it has to be in that same bowl of my grandmother's. Um, again, you know, when you're using fresh produce, you really want to wash it very well. What I do is I cut it in half, rinse it, and then put it in a strainer. Well, my carrots are doing nicely. They're still cooking in the um, butter and brown sugar. They need to reduce quite a bit. So it works very well. We're going to peek in on Mr. Bird. Just starting to get that smell. Just wonderful, that aroma. So, okay, red cabbage time. What we're going to do is just take out the outer leaves. I like to cut the really nice tight part. We want very fine shreds. There we go. We'll start with a little bit of olive oil in the pan. And I want to throw a little bit of onion in there. And an apple. So we'll start with the cabbage. We're going to add an apple. <clears throat> That'd be a nice Granny Smith here. It adds to that sweet, sour mentality of the cabbage and of the vinegar that we're going to be adding. I actually have some chopped onion. We're going to use that. Carrots are coming along nicely. We're finishing them off in that butter and brown sugar. Can't go wrong. Just can't go wrong with that. And then uh, cabbage has a bit to go. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll use that bacon we cooked off yesterday. 
Well, you know, I always reserve some bacon fat. So if we need a little bit more flavor, we can add it to the cabbage. Okay, everybody has their mom's favorite way of making a gravy or sauce for Thanksgiving. The majority of us were shown probably taking the turkey drippings and reducing them on the stove. Well, I recommend that way too. The only thing is, I like mine a little thicker, so I'm going to be making a roux, and the roux will be added to the uh, pan drippings and to some poultry stock I have. Basic operation for a roux, it's so easy. You actually take um, equal parts butter and flour, and then you usually brown it to really get the flour taste out of it. Well, I do a few other things to mine, of course. So let me throw this on the stove. Let me throw the butter on so it gets melted. Okay. Carrots are just about ready to come off. And again, we're going to do equal amounts. So we're going to add the flour. We're going to measure out the flour. And the roux is something you can go ahead and make the day before or the morning up. But again, we're just going to take this garlic, we're going to peel it. Now that stove's loaded. Pretty soon I get to fire up the other one. Um, We're going to chop this garlic. We're going to brown that in the butter with a little fresh rosemary. Okay, it's all peeled. Let me just check, as the French would say, the piano being the instrument of the kitchen, the stove. And we're sweating down that cabbage nicely. Add a little white wine to it. That'll add a nice acid flavor to the cabbage. We'll uh, Round it out with a little sugar and oil yet, and vinegar. Now, the weather has been really great here in Chicago, and it's been warm. I think this is one of the warmest Thanksgivings I've ever seen. And because of that, my rosemary is still nice and fresh. So I picked a little rosemary, and we're going to add that to the root to kind of flavor it. I always like to use flavored roux. It adds a little bit to the sauce. Okay, garlic's ready. The wine, you can start uh, smelling the wine evaporating with the cabbage. You're just starting to get the hint of the turkey aroma. And uh, I'll tell you, it's really starting to smell great in here. You know, I always just pull backwards on the rosemary. I've washed it, of course. There you go. We're just going to do a little dice on this like you would parsley. Perfect. We're going to let the garlic and the rosemary saute down in that butter before we add the flour to make the roux. Cabbage is reducing in that wine. To the cabbage, I'm going to add a little balsamic vinegar. You can use cider vinegar. You can use regular vinegar. You'll just have to adjust it with a bit of um, sugar. You're kind of making a gastric with the combination of the sweet and sour to that.
Okay, the carrots are done and the glaze is perfect. I'll put that on the cutting board so you can see it. The rosemary, garlic, just starting to brown and soften in there. Usually I would do this on the stove, but I want you to see this on camera. So we've incorporated the flour. We want to stir it in. I don't know how many of you have made like pot de choux dough where the flour and the butter and the milk kind of gets into a ball or to a harder stage. That's what we want to do with the roux. So we're going to add a titch more flour. And we're going to thicken that up and it's going to pull away from the sides of the pan. We want to cook, we want to make the flour and butter almost brown to caramelize. It'll cook the flour taste out for you. I'm going to add just a little bit more flour. Well, that's all we have in part two of Thanksgiving. Uh, you'll be returning a little bit later when the turkey's coming out of the oven. The second turkey's coming in and we're off to the police department for delivery. So have a great Thanksgiving and go watch that parade. This is round three. The first bird just came out of the oven. It's golden, it smells fantastic. Uh, what we're gonna do is transfer it into a kind of a tote thing to get up to the police station. The dressing is finished. I transferred that also in a container. Uh, before we go, we have two important things to do yet. One is to mash the potatoes and also to finish up the sauce. So um, I've taken all the drippings from the original bird and we have it uh, in a nice sauce pot and we're gonna bring it to a simmer. And in the meantime, my potatoes are fork tender exactly where we want them. You know what, we're going to give them one more minute. So we'll do the sauce, we'll do the gravy first. Um, you know, we made the roux earlier on. And what we're going to do is just like a good couple tablespoons of the roux, which has the garlic and the fresh rosemary in it. We're going to add that to the sauce. And we're going to whisk it through. And I do it by like heaping tablespoon by tablespoon to the gravy. And it gives it a really nice buttery finish to the sauce with the roux and the flavor of the garlic and rosemary. So why don't we uh, take the big old guy out of the, out of the roaster here or while we're waiting for everything else to develop. There we go, 22 pounds amazing. We're going to add one more tablespoon of the roux. Sauce is done. In fact, it's always good to taste that. See if it needs any more seasoning. It's perfect. Let's drain the potatoes. Move the sauce to the back burner. It's five pounds of potatoes. I've added a little horseradish, grated horseradish, to the water while it was boiling. I like to take an immersion blender and do my potatoes. Um, I go in first to kind of beat them up a little bit. You can smell that horseradish. It's really terrific. I'm going to add the butter. It's the holiday. 
a little Parmesan cheese. And half and half. And now we're just going to finish that up. Success. And again, I'm going to just taste for needs a little salt or pepper. Little salt. And we're done. I'm going to transfer those into a tote container. Now that's love for Thanksgiving. I like a little lumps in there so they know they're real. Mom never was able to get all her lumps out either, so I don't feel bad. And again, just simple boiled potatoes, a little horseradish. Half and half, Parmesan cheese, and butter. What's better than that for Thanksgiving? Okay. I put the uh, carrots back in to warm up a little bit. I like to take everything hot. All the cold items are in the car. This is twin number two. Might have been second, but it's going to taste fantastic. Okay, we readjusted the oven. Again, we're going to go back up to about 425 for about 45 minutes. And away we go. I'm going to wrap up everything for the police department and we'll be off on our adventure. Well, it's delivery time to the police station, so we're starting to load up. We already have the ever-famous Jello mold, the cranberries, the cucumbers, and we have the liquid gold, as they call it for the holiday, the gravy in the car. So you'll see me taking a few more things out. Stuffing and red cabbage. Mashed potatoes and carrots. And now, it's the turkey. Okay, George, we're ready to roll. Okay, we're pulling away from the bungalow, and we have the Thanksgiving dinner for the police department all ready. And we're just taking a scenic drive down to Maple, and then we'll hop over to Greenwood. Well, <clears throat> here we are at the police station. Okay, we're going to start with the turkey. Potatoes and stuffing. Jello mold. 
Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you too, all right. It's all about pie. Well, that's about it here for our Thanksgiving special with Bungalow Chef. We just delivered everything to the police department. I have to scoot home real quick and start up that dinner for family and friends. But I'd like to share one thing with you. You know, Thanksgiving is full of tradition, family, friends, and even culinary. And my great, great grandmother Shadi wrote this in a cookbook at about 1890, and I'd like to share it with you. This must not be forgotten, whatever be your dinner. Serve it hot, never forget the salt on the potatoes and the fire under the pot. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks a lot, enjoy.